Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna cover even more Explorer Notes on Scorched Earth. We're getting really close to the end, so let's get right into this. Uh, although, quickly, before we get started, if you do find this video helpful, then please subscribe and like the video. Both help me out a lot. It's completely free, and you can always change your mind later. Um, so let's get started. So this is where we're starting this video, at this mountain in the middle of nowhere. This is the surrounding area. And uh, we're gonna start at the top of this mountain. You can see how from the top, which we are at right now, there is a kind of walkway going down here. Um, right here. And we wanna go down this way a little bit. So you very soon come to a little platform area right here. Go a little bit further down. And you can see there is another one forming on the other side of this path with a soul tree on it. And right next to that tree, no ruin, is uh, Rockwell number 30 at 30.5 by 44. Then for this next one, we want to start right here where I'm now um, at the first sort of plateau that we were at. So that's where the first node is. And now we're up here. There's a little tree there. We want to pay attention to the big one. So we're going to use this to angle our way, sort of to go down the mountain. So right underneath this, we can see there is a kind of this rock right here. I'm jumping down right now. And basically just continue straight this direction, sort of towards that peak right there. Um, head down and straight forward. And you should come to a ruin right here. Fairly easy to spot, middle... Kind of surrounded by trees, but it is kind of open around, just like in the immediate area. There is a decay note number 17 at 30.3 by 39.7. And then for this next note, the third one, we want to start here at this sort of um, rocky spike thing. Right there. So that's the plateau we just started at. We want to pay our attention to this one. If we stand on the top here... I can't not land. Okay, well, then that's that's a pity. Can I? There we go. Um, and you look towards the blue obelisk, directly towards the blue obelisk, and look down from that. You should see a little ruin at the foothills here. So just from the spike to the blue obelisk, go down the mountain, and there is a little ruin right here. Pretty easy to spot. And it obviously has a note. It's another decay note, decay number 18 at 28.2 by 41.7. And then for this next one, we're heading towards the blue obelisk right there. And it's kind of hard to direct you to it, but that's the mountain we were just at. Blue obelisk is right there. And you can see that there is um, sort of this mountain right next to it, like the blue obelisk there that starts here and moves around almost like a little kind of C shape or like a bow shape or whatever. And at the very foothills, like if you start here, right next to it, there is a ruin. Um, like before we get to the core, yeah, I, I'll just show you the coordinates, but this is the area that we're in as well. Rockwell number six at 24.2 by 39, right here. And then from that note, that's over there, you can see the blue obelisk in that mountain that we were just at. Um, you want to head this way. So if we go from an aerial view, you can see that from the note that's over here, there's a few spikes right there. And this big, uh, sort of almost like a ma little rock tower. You want to go towards this uh, tower right here. Um, this is roughly where we are right now. And you can see there's a little plateau up here with sort of cliffs surrounding it. And as you can see, there's a big ruin here with uh, Dakea note number 8 at 22.3 by 44.1. And then from this, we have a note that has no ruin, so I have to use this to navigate. Uh, basically, from this ruin right here that we were just at, um, go towards the blue obelisk. Just fly towards the blue obelisk, walk, whatever. Should have this rock to your so uh, left when you just walk straight. Uh, and you soon come to a little cliff. Right here. Or like a little, I don't know, a little fall, cliff, whatever. Just jump down. 
uh, and you can see that there is a very, like, a much bigger cliff right next to it. Uh, and then there's a little m plateau right here that we are at. Uh, and if you go kind of to this cliff area and you look on this little plateau, probably the very terrible description, but I think you got the point. LN note number 29 at 21.7 by 43.1. For this next one, we're heading to the start of the canyon. This is where we are right now. Um, so that's the Blue Obelisk. Here's the canyon's beginning. This is roughly where we are at the map, as you can see. And when you kind of get to the start of these diagonal, strange, oddly shaped cliff thingies, get to the start of that, you can see that it sort of smooth, smooths down right there. If you just look down, um, down here you can see some big rocks, and between two of them, right here, is a pretty sizable ruin. Should not really be that hard to find at all. And of course, there is a ruin, or uh, not a ruin, it's a note here uh, somewhere. Dire uh, Deathworm dossier at 18.5 by 46.7. Then we're heading pretty close to the Blue Obelisk. This is roughly where we are right now. Um, the Blue Obelisk is right there, and to find this one, you can just basically follow the kind of start of the desert right here. Follow the start of the desert or the kind of edge right here. And if you just look a little bit up, towards the side, in this area. There's a tower, little pillar, uh, ruin. Elena note number 14 at 15.8 by 40.1. And we're gonna do pretty much the same for this next one. We are even closer to the obelisk now. This is roughly the coordinates we are at. Uh, obelisk is right there. You wanna basically just follow the edge of the jungle. No, the jungle, no, the desert. Follow the edge of the jungle, look inland. And basically when you get straight, sort of, uh, what would that be like, uh, yeah, north of the Blue Obelisk, um, you can see that there is a ruin here. You can also see that right next to it is a mountain, or beginning of a mountain, and sort of a walkway leading down to the sort of oasis. And we have Helena Note number 15 at 14.3. There is zero by 35.3. <clears throat> then we're gonna get one that's pretty much on the obelisk. So we're starting here. And this is the surroundings. Pretty beautiful. Uh, but if you look one direction, um, or that, like roughly east, you should see a very big like spike right next to it. If you go up there on this little plateau part right here, right under that spike. You can see that there is um, Helena note number 28 at 17.4 by 34.9. Then we're heading to roughly this area right here, basically north of that mountain, sort of start of it. You can see the desert starting right there. This is the surroundings, Blue Obelisk is right there. And this one is pretty easy, but at the same time, kind of hard to direct you to directly. So I'm just going to kind of say it. So this is where we are right now. Look towards the mountain. You can see how it's like a little desert path leading up it. There's the obelisk on your left. And you should find this pretty big ruin if you just look from the desert edge there. It is Decay Note number 2. That's 14.7 uh, by 27.7. So, for the next one, if you just follow the desert edge, so we were just over there, if you follow the desert edge to roughly this area right here, uh, you just follow it, and you can see how there's a little bit of sand, it's like a little triangle of sand right there, but equally as easy to spot is the actual ruin, which is kind of in the middle of it, right there. There's the blue obelisk to your left, again, map, and here's the... Uh, note, it's Helena note number 12 at 15.6 by 21.6. Then for the second final note uh, for this video, we're gonna head to this area on the map, and here's the coordinates. Sorry if my voice is a bit uh, crap right now. I've been recording like four of these episodes at this point. 
Getting a bit tired from talking a lot, but uh, anyways, obelisk is right there. Uh, you basically want to just head south from the obelisk, uh, and you can see all of these sort of walkways right here. And uh, well, you can see this arch on this side. It's a good indicator that you're on the right path. You can also see some of these uh, tall kind of rocky spikes right here. And it might be a little bit hard to track or to see this thing, but when you're standing on these or next to them, you just look directly up on the cliff face and you should so barely be able to see that it's an Extinction Chronicles note right here. Just a square ruin sort of pasted on the terrain. And I'm not allowed to land. There we go. Question mark times three. Number 14 at 24.3 by 29.6. Again, this is roughly the area. Okay, so for this final note, we have to head into a cave. Um, might be a little tricky for me to show where this cave entrance is because all around us is just all of this like rocky terrain, but I'm gonna do my best. So this is where we currently are. Um, coordinates and rough location on the map there and uh, this is what the surroundings look like um, right here so uh, over here um, like um, southwards we have this cave or like tunnel going through the mountain uh, and then you have like a little uh, walkway from this tunnel goes up on the side here and you want to basically, if you're on land, you want to follow this um, little slope. Then you want to kind of go over this little bridge right here. That from a distance you can see is actually a bridge. It's a hole underneath. You want to go over that bridge, which will lead you to an area that looks like this. Um, right here. So you can see the blue obelisk. And you can see how there is this slope going down again. And if you follow that slope around and you kind of turn backwards, sort of towards the tunnel, except it's a dead end. Um, if you go in this like little area, I'm going to just show you again, uh, coordinates and map location. So if you are right, like under this slope that we were kind of up at, you follow the slope and under the slope, if you just follow under that slope, you get to the cave entrance right there so that's the cave entrance we have to go through I'm just gonna quickly cryopod my pteranodon and then we'll head into the cave and get the note all right so my pteranodon is cryopodded so let's head right into the cave and uh, we don't have to really go that far so just keep walking so one it's only one way to go from here for now so just head down the cave um, continue heading down and you'll eventually come to some water, means that you're on the right path. And eventually you'll have to jump across, so you want to do that. And now you can see that the area kind of splits up a little bit. So you can go left, you can go straight forward, and you can go to the right. And you can go, I'm pretty certain all of these eventually will lead down there, but the shortest way is here to the right, with all of these glowy bugs. Um, so just head this way. And, um, yeah, you get to some obsidian right here, and you get to this area. That's where you would have come down if you took the very, like, most, like, uh, left and way. And you can kind of see a bridge over there. That would be the central way, but that doesn't really matter. Point is, you get right here, and uh, you want to just jump down. And now you can continue on this path right here. Uh, be careful, there are some nasties here, actually they're resting on top of each other, that's kind of weird. But yeah, you want to head down in this cave, now it's just one way basically. And you can see that the road now splits up to a kind of smaller way with some blue kind of lighting. And then this much bigger way to the right, um, that means that you're in the right place. But we don't need to go any further, because as you can see right here, there's a bunch of bones um, right here. And uh, right next to this big rib cage with sail that looks to be, I guess, a Spinosaurus? I don't know. But you can see right next to it, we have Helena note number seven at 31.8 by 29.3, if you want to know the coordinates. Although, obviously, it doesn't really matter when you're in this cave, because you won't probably use that. But um, with that, we've taken the final note of the day. So thank you so much for watching. 
Um, again, if you did find this one helpful, then please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Both help me out a lot, and it's completely free. And you can, again, change your mind if you do that and just unsubscribe in the future. But um, that's it for now, so goodbye.